there are some really nice indicators recommended by the scientific community on how to track climate and biodiversity and sustainability, which are the three big Rio conventions, UN conventions. Um, but you cannot make those maps quickly enough and get them out to people who need it if you are not using automation. And the key to automation now is that over the last, well, we, we started developing this technology actually 20 years ago in the US national labs. Um, and then we've started to bring it to market um, for fancy countries and fancy companies 10 years ago with my previous venture back startup Descartes Labs. Um, but uh, now the, the thing that Impact Observatory is doing is that we are democratizing this technology. The type of AI that can take satellite observations from either national public data or from commercial satellites. And you can see an example of tracking um, sort of deforestation on the north, uh, one of the north edge of one of the big islands in the sort of Indonesian archipelago. Um, you can now produce these things and track changes happening in near real time across the entire constellation of constellations of public and satellite systems. Um, and so Impact Observatory, we are content providers. Um, we work with, closely with Esri because Esri is one of the major vendors of cartography software. It's the world's leading vendor of cartography software to governments and industry. Um, but you can have the map making tools. Unless you have the content, you can't get the, to the decisions that people need. And so it's fundamental to be able to produce this type of data that people need. And if you can produce it to people in the right way, we can avoid something that I think we're all worried about, which is the, the, the risk of greenwashing, of people claiming that they're trying to do the right thing, but if nobody watches, if there's no agreed upon independent way to verify that changes are real and that impacts what impacts people are actually having, then there's a real risk of greenwashing. And what we want to do is we want to use this type of AI plus space technology through maps, through geospatial data, to move the whole community forward to a point where we can achieve something that I want to, the concept is provably green as the opposite of greenwashing. How can people's actions be provably green? And how can that information be shared so that the regulators, the actors in industry, the folks in markets and finance who are funding different people, and consumers who are consuming brands. How can we all know that we, through our individual actions we're contributing to outcomes that are provably green? And with the help of, of a number of our partners, including Esri, we have released as a digital public good the world's first time series of annual global maps so that this type of data that was previously only available to the US and then to the world's richest companies is now available to every country. And uh, these digital public good annual maps are available through Esri Living Atlas, through Microsoft Planetary Computer, through AWS Registry of Open Data, and also through the UN Biodiversity Lab that uh, my team uh, worked with the UN Environment Program and UN Development Program to build and, and operate. So um, there's really good data now. Think of, think of like what happened with cell phones, where all countries all around the world skipped generations of landline technology and went straight to smartphones. There's a similar opportunity now for every country to have data that's very similar to the very expensive data that the US has made for itself over the last 20 years.